Hi, this is Federico with Cuddle, and in this video we're going to be making paper envelopes. In the first part, I'm going to give you a quick tour of the interface, and I'm going to show you how to generate a custom envelope and how to download a file that's going to be ready to cut. And then in the second part, I'm going to show you how everything was put together in case you want to dive deeper into designing your own versions. So let's get started. The first thing you'll see when you open the project link is the readme section, which usually contains notes and instructions on how to use the project and pictures. And in this case, some uh, quick animations uh, showing you the different things you can change. In order to generate an envelope, what we need to do is go to the design section. And here we can see a view of the envelope while folded. Uh, and then we have some parameters we can change. The parameters here, the important ones, would be the width and the height. And there are two ways in which I can change them. So I can click and drag the mouse to change the numbers. And I can also simply type the number that I want. In this case, uh, we can see the envelope while folded. And then if you want to see it unfolded, then we can go to the cut uh, component. And here we can still change the parameters if we want. And we have a reference for the size of paper that we can use in, in order to cut the envelope. So I can actually change that. Um, I have it set to 12 by 12 because that's the size of a, a Cricut machine. But if you have a piece of paper that has a more common size like eight and a half by 11, you can always type that and then as you can see, it's a little bit past what I can cut like that. And in order to save the file, I can go to File and then Export SVG. And that will allow me to save the file to my hard drive and then use it to cut. Uh, in that export, this paper size uh, rectangle won't be present because this is just a reference and a guide. Besides the width and the height, there are other things we can change in this particular design. So I'm going to look at it from this view. Um, so I can change the width or the height, but I can also change the proportions of those uh, particular flaps. So for example, if I want to make the top flap really long, I can change this parameter here that affects the top flap. So in this case, it would be 60% of the total height of the envelope. So it is expressed as a fraction. So for example, if I want to change the side flaps, I can also uh, change this number to make them bigger or smaller. Um, I added this particular feature because in some, some of the extreme cases, let's say if I want a really tiny envelope, um, I want to make sure that there is these flaps are always overlapping. So as you can see, there is this triangle or gap. So in order to avoid that gap, I wanted to make that side flap a little bit bigger. And at the same time, I often want to use the least amount of paper that I can get away with. So in some of the extreme uh, cases, for example, if I make the envelope really big, um, and then I check on my cut. So that got kind of too big for the paper size that I intend to use. So I can change the proportions of the top flap and then just double check with my design to make sure they're still overlapping. So now I can export this file and it's gonna fit on a, a regular letter size paper. If you wanna go a little bit deeper, um, we can also change some things in the flap design itself. So for example, the flap is a parallelogram that has a, a long side and a short side, and I can change the dimensions of the short side by changing this number here. This defines the short side, so that makes it more acute. And I can also change how much I'm rounding the corners. So I can click on these round corners, and by changing these numbers, I can make them more or less uh, rounded. This changes the radius of the rounding and that affects all of my design. Now let's look at a paper envelope and after that I want to show you how I design all of these in case you want to make your own.
So the basic shape of my envelope is going to be a rectangle. So I'm going to start by dragging a rectangle on my canvas. So one thing that's going to affect a lot of the design decisions uh, that we make from now on is going to be the location of the transform center, which is the point that serves as a reference for the location of the shape and for the way the scales. So just to demonstrate, as a default, the transform center is on the top left hand corner of this rectangle. So if I change the position, uh, this number is the distance between that point and the center of the canvas. And if I scale the shape, you can see how it scales towards the right because it always, it always leaves that, that point uh, in the same position. Um, it's going to be easier for me to think about it if I move it to the center of the top side. So I'm going to hold command and then move the transform center until it snaps on the midpoint. I'm going to move my whole shape to the center of the canvas again. So now if I scale it, it moves equally to both sides. And the uh, reference for the position is the uh, top center. So you can see it's zero, zero. Now I can start creating some parameters that are going to determine the size of my envelope. So I'm going to create a new parameter here. I'm going to call it width. And another one called height. And I'm just going to plug in some arbitrary numbers to start with. And now I want these parameters to determine the size of this shape. So I need to move to sort of plug them into the way it scales. So the width is going to be the distance on the or the scaling on the x-axis. So I can write width and use the autocomplete here. And then the height is going to be the uh, scaling on the y-axis. So, so that would be the basic shape of my envelope. I can see if it's working by changing these numbers here. I can also type any number that I want. And so it's working. The envelope is going to be made out of this basic square plus some flaps that are going to fold in. So I'm going to design those flaps. So I'm going to create a new component. I'm going to call it flap. And I'm going to take a slightly different approach for this one. So I'm going to first sketch it out using the pen tool, sketch out the basic shape. So I can use the pen tool to create a path that is defined by these uh, anchor points. And to finish, I'm going to close it and press escape. So as you can see, I created a path that is defined by four points and it's a sort of a parallelogram and I want it to be defined by these new parameters. So I'm going to create these parameters inside of the flap component and I want it to have a long side. I want it to have a height and then I'm going to create one called the short side. I think they're somewhat descriptive. So the top would be the long side, this would be the short side, and the height would be the distance between the two. So now I'm going to go uh, point by point defining uh, the position of these uh, anchors based on those parameters I created. So I'm going to um, put some arbitrary numbers here uh, so I can navigate it as we go. So um, the reason I sketch it out first is that it helps me navigate the uh, the canvas as I go. So I want this shape to also be defined based on the center point. So I know that the long side needs to be l half to the left of the origin and half to the right of the origin. So that means this point is going to be um, it's going to be negative because it's to the left. So it's going to be the long side divided by 2 because it's half to that side, and then it's going to stay in the 0 on the y-axis. Then I'm going to move to the next point. And this one, similarly, is going to be the long side, divided by 2, half to the right, and it stays on the 0 uh, for the y-axis. Then this point is going to be the short side on the x-axis, so short side divided by 2.
and then for its height is going to be defined by this h for height and then the last point is going to be again negative short side divided by 2 and again the height so this creates my basic uh, parallelogram so uh, I can also confirm that things are working by changing these numbers um, and then the last touch is that I actually want the short side to be defined um, by the long side so that means that I want it to be always shorter than the long side by a certain amount so I can actually uh, write long side minus one so uh, the short side that means the short side is always going to be one inch shorter than the long side. Then um, I actually want these corners to be rounded. So let's see how to go about that. I'm going to select the shape and I can use this modifier called round corners. Um, downside is by default, it applies a uh, rounding radius to all of the corners, but I actually only want the, the two of these corners to be rounded. So the way to do that is to create a list uh, with brackets. So each one of these numbers is going to be rounding um, one of the corners. So I type them all so I can see which one is which. So I can change those numbers so I know that rounds that corner and this rounds that corner. Uh, and that sounds like a big, a big radius, so I'm going to make them something a little bit smaller. And that makes my flap component. Now let's use it. So I'm going to uh, go back to the rectangle and I'm actually going to rename this component as the design and I'm going to move it down so the way I want to design it is I want to see the envelope as if it was folded so I can see that everything overlaps the way I want it so I'm going to start by dragging uh, a flap onto my canvas and I'm going to be careful to always place it um, at the origin. Uh, we'll see why in a moment. So now that I have my first flap, this is going to be the top flap and I want these uh, long side to always be defined by the width of the envelope. So I can simply type width. So what that effectively does is that uh, every time I change the width, it also changes the long side of this particular flap. Um, so that's looking like an envelope already. Now I want the bottom flap. So I'm going to drag another one, careful to place it on the center. And similarly, the long side, I want to be defined by the width. Um, now its position, it's going to be a little bit different because First, I want to uh, rotate it, so I'm going to rotate it so it faces up, so that's uh, 180 degrees. And now I want its position to match the height of the envelope. So that means I can uh, change the position on the y-axis to height. So that means that this flap, it's always going to be uh, at the bottom, even if I change the height of my envelope. Let's zoom out so you can see. Now let's make the side flaps. So I'm going to bring another flap. So I know this one needs to be rotated again because it's going to be placed on the right hand side. So that's uh, 90 degrees. And Again, rather than uh, moving it by hand to the position, I actually want to define its position by the parameters. So I know it needs to move on the x-axis to the right, so that would be half of the width. So I can say that the width divided by 2. And I want it to move on the y-axis to the center, and that would be half of the height. So. And now the long side of this flap is also going to be the height of the envelope. So I need to say that this long side is the height. 
So now every every time I change the total height, then that also scales as I want it. And then uh, this side is always the same as the other side. So uh, I'm going to use this modifier called mirror repeat. So that effectively reflects that. So that's my, that's my basic envelope. Now let's think about um, making them overlap. So my first instinct would be to uh, change the height of any of these flaps and then adjust it so it, it looks the way I want it to look. Um, the downside of doing that is that now if I change the height, then that won't necessarily uh, always match. So the, the way I want to think about the height of any of these flaps is as a fraction of the total height of the envelope. So I can define that as, if I were to define it as the total height, then you can see the flap occupies the entire area. But if I multiply it by a certain fraction, so say like a percentage, for example, if I want it to be 80%, I can multiply by 0 0.80. And what that effectively does is that every time I change the height, then this, the size of the flap is always going to be 80% of the total. So that makes it more reusable. And uh, similarly with the top flap, I can think of that one as a as a percentage of the total height. So I'm going to say height times twenty percent. So if I make it twenty percent and the other one is eighty, then they're always going to uh, be so close to each other. So I actually wanted to be a little beyond so it overlaps. And then the uh, the side flap now is also, uh, it can also be defined as a percentage of the width. So I'm going to define it once. And then I can come back and adjust those to use the least amount of paper, but it still have the overlap that I want. So that is the basic envelope. So now, um, what I need to do is uh, be able to unfold it. Before we unfold it, I think we're going to end up with a more versatile design if we add the proportions of the flaps as parameters. Because if I if I test like the, some of the extreme envelopes I could be making, um, I could lose some of that overlap I'm looking for. For, for example, in this uh, small one, I end up with this little hole so I would have to come in here and then change that to make it work. Um, so there are some extreme cases or some design decisions I could be making in, in an easier fashion by making those more explicit. So I think that's what I want to do. I'm going to create a, a top flap ratio and a side flap. and a bottom flap. And so those are going to be uh, roughly the ratios I, I, just, um, I was just using. So for the, for the top flap, I now just need to replace those ratios. In the appropriate places. So let's go to the bottom. and then the side finally. So what I effectively have now is a way to change those uh, ratios in an easier way um, to make uh, this in variety of envelopes. So now let's do the unfolding part. I want to keep the view of the envelope when closed. Um, so I'm going to create another component uh, where the envelope is open. So I'm going to duplicate the existing design component. And then I'm going to rename it as the cut uh, because that's the file I'm going to use to cut, cut the envelope. So in order to unfold it, I need to rotate the position of some of these. 
So the top flap needs to rotate 180 degrees. Then the bottom flap needs to rotate 180 as well. So it goes back to zero. Then the side flaps need to uh, rotate And then let's do the final touches to make it uh, usable. So the first thing is I want all of these shapes to be joined so I have a single cut outline. So I'm going to select them all and apply the uh, Boolean Union modifier. So I have a single outline. But in some cases, I actually want that center rectangle to uh, serve as a score, as a score line. So I'm going to go in here, select it, then I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to bring that outside of the group. That way it's visible. And to make it more clear and usable, I'm going to change the stroke color. I think something like a blue makes sense. And I've noticed that, um, say, when I use this in uh, Cricut Design Space, it's nice to have these outside shape have a fill. So something like a white fill makes more sense and then I'm gonna change the position of this uh, rectangle so the score is on top. So that makes my um, my file ready to export and then the last little detail I want to add is I want to have a reference for the paper size and so that is again just uh, I can I can do a rectangle that has this transform center um, in the middle and um, to make it just a reference that doesn't export when I export it I'm gonna first uh, use like a common size so I'm gonna scale it to eight and a half by eleven um, and then so it doesn't export I'm gonna uh, use these uh, I'm gonna make it into a guide by uh, clicking these shapes to guide so that red uh, outline, when I go to File and Export at SVG, that is not going to export, but this is going to help me when I'm designing envelopes. So if I have an envelope that is about this size, then I can see if it fits into the page that I intend to cut it out of. And if I need to uh, change the size of that page, I can always rescale that. So. I hope this is helpful and it's going to help you design uh, a bunch of different envelopes that uh, may fit your needs. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and uh, thank you for watching.